Welcome to episode 16 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I'd like to discuss how to create seamless patterns and tileable textures in Comfy UI. These textures are perfect for 3D models and can also be printed on fabric. They're versatile for various web and print projects such as backgrounds, wallpapers, wrapping paper, and textiles. By using tiling, you can easily produce larger images without any hassle. Open Comfy UI, go to the manager, and make sure you have the latest version of Comfy UI and nodes. Click on update all and restart. Then go to the custom nodes manager. We will need the iTools node that we installed in the last episode. We also need to install a new node called the seamless tiling node made by Spinagon. Click install, wait for the restart button to appear and restart Comfy UI. After the restart, we have everything we need to get started. Click on load and get a basic SDXL workflow like we did in episode three. This will work with either an SD or SDXL workflow, but unfortunately it doesn't work with SD3 or Flux. To see it better, I will move these nodes to the side. Just after loading the checkpoint, we need to place a node that will connect uh, to the K sampler. Double click on the canvas and search for seamless and we will find a node called seamless tile. Now we just need to connect um, the, the model input and output, which are the purple colored input and output. It's quite easy to connect. Here you have uh, some extra options like enabling or disabling the node and some options that we will discuss later. This is the first part that allows us to do the tiling. The second part happens when we decode the result. And currently we have the VA decode, but instead of that, uh, we need another one called circular VA decode tile. We just need to redo the connection from the VA decode to the new one that allows us to get those repeated textures. Uh, don't forget to connect the VAE. In my case, the, uh, uh, the VAE is included in the model and we can remove the old VAE decode node. Uh, I will change the color to blue so you can see it easily. Basically, that is all we need two nodes to make the images repeat. Now we just need to add a good prompt that, that describes our texture or pattern. We know that we can't always get good results with SDXL, so it requires some prompt engineering. However, the resulting image is seamless, even if it sometimes looks ugly. Uh, this is the result for that prompt. This image is repeatable, but what does that mean? Let me copy the image and then I can paste it in Photoshop. If I duplicate the image and place it anywhere on the right, left, or top in any position, the pattern should repeat perfectly. As you can see, it works great. The same goes if I place it underneath, you can see how the flowers are continuous. If you want to create a pattern, you can paste it in a new document, go to the edit menu and select define pattern. Uh, give it a name and click OK. Now it's saved as a Photoshop pattern. You can create any document size. Um, and if I add a pattern layer, usually you can see it's the last one saved. I select that and you can see how it can be moved to any position. You can scale it. I don't recommend making it bigger, but you can make it smaller. Try values like 75, 50, or 25 for a better look. But ideally, it should be 100. You can also rotate the pattern. You can also create a small pattern to use on the web, making it repeat from code and using it as a background. This way, it loads very quickly if the image is small and it will repeat across the entire screen. We can also see how it repeats the image in Comfy UI. For that, we need another node. So I asked our friend Makati to design a custom node for this purpose. Um, search for iTools and we have this grid filler. Here you can connect your image that comes out from the decode node. Then let's add another save image node and connect it to that grid. This grid has some black lines because it was set up to create nicely arranged images, allowing you to place a bunch of images inside this grid. But for today, I just want to uh, repeat that image a few times to see how it works. Um, I will make it bigger. Then let's set a fixed seed so we don't have to generate the image each time, only the parts that change. And currently we have those gaps, which are set to a value of two and they are black because the color code for that is black. If I change the color gaps to zero, you can see those gaps are gone. So we have repeated our images in three rows and three columns, just as is uh, set in the grid node. Right now, our image is 1024 pixels. 
but the grid is also set to 1024 pixels. This means it made our, our grid at that exact size by making our original image smaller. So the final image is 1024 pixels. If I set it to only two columns and rows, the final image would still be 1024 pixels, but the original image would only be 512 pixels and would repeat that. Um, if I want to keep the original image size and just repeat it, we need to multiply. So we multiply 1024 by two if we have two columns and we do the same for height since our image is square. Now, when I run it, it looks the same since it still has four images, but the size is actually double that of the final image. It's 2048 pixels now. If I multiply by three and change the rows and columns to three, the image will have three rows and then three columns. And the final image would be 3072 pixels. If I open the image and click on it, you can see how big it is. Now, if I go and disable the tiling option on the seamless tile node and run it again, you can see the image is different even if it's the same seed, and now it doesn't repeat anymore. Uh, you can see those edges that you get with any image generator that doesn't support tiling. Let's try with a different prompt so you can see it better. This is how it looks when you normally generate an image. You can clearly see that it doesn't repeat. Now I will go and enable tiling. Now I got a completely different image, but this time it does repeat. Let me show you how I usually create prompts for seamless patterns, just like those you saw in the intro of this episode. Um, I use ChatGPT to generate prompts. I just asked for a stable diffusion prompt. And in this case, I asked for some flowers on a white background. And my, my prompt is influenced by the fact that uh, I saved in memory that I do three-dimensional layer design. So it tries to adjust accordingly. For example, I can save anything I want in memory. So ChatGPT knows that information. You just ask it to save things in memory. And you can also ask it to show what it has in memory. You might be surprised by what it remembers. I have the plus paid version. Anyway, I will just ask it to redo the prompt without that layered design. And it gives me a new prompt I can ask to remove the quotes and so on. Um, you can request uh, all those changes at the beginning and you'll get nice prompts um, afterward. Let's test this prompt to see what we can get. And I got some nice flowers. Not bad for SDXL. Next, let's ask for some wooden planks. The result is this. You can try different prompts, but also change the the seed to see if you can get better results. Let's play with the prompt by adding some words like simple and minimalist and make the prompt smaller. Let's mention the wood type and adjust it more. Yes, this is perfect for what I want to show you because it has only one node. Uh, well, a tree node, not a comfy UI node. Let's make some space here so we can add another comfy UI node, this time called offset image. I can connect the decode node to this offset image and then save a preview. I will put the value at zero so it doesn't offset at all. When I run it, you can see it's identical. Now, if I offset the x-axis by 10%, it will move that percentage on the x-axis. If I put 20, you can see it moved 20% from the origin point. If I put 50, it moved to half and it starts to come out from the other side. I can put 80 and then 100 brings it back to the beginning. So zero and 100 do not move at all. I can do the same for the y-axis allowing you to move and adjust the pattern to make it visually pleasing. We also have this other option with modify in place. I'm not sure how exactly it changes the results since I didn't see any difference, but on my older PC, it gave me an, an error. Um, so I would recommend using the make a copy option as it's best to keep it as the default. Um, for tiling, uh, we can also enable X only if we want to repeat only in one direction. As you can see, it only repeats in the X direction. And this could be useful if you have a cityscape or something and don't want the buildings to repeat on top of each other. We also have tiling for the Y axis only. And as you can see, it only repeats in that direction. If I zoom in closer, you can see that it didn't repeat properly. I will set the default to enable. So it repeats in both X and Y. In the output folder, you can see all the variations. I used only save nodes, but you can use preview and save only the images you want um, by right clicking and selecting save. Uh, right now, all start with the comfy UI prefix. So it's hard to know which is the offset, which is bigger and so on. I can change the 
prefix here. Maybe I will just use pat for the first one, you know, pat O for the second because we offset it. Uh, so, and maybe pat X3 uh, for the last one because it repeats three times. Now, when we run the workflow, we can find all those images there with different names. As you can see, the final image is quite big. Uh, I can make it five times bigger if I want by multiplying by five and changing the rows and columns to five, resulting in a huge image that has over 5,000 pixels. A few years ago, I used to create uh, seamless patterns in a vector format manually in Adobe Illustrator. Here are some examples of what you can use patterns for from um, textiles to prints on tote bags, printed mugs, uh, shirts, or used in packaging design, which is yeah, quite popular. You can often see it on clothing, but really the only limit is your imagination. Wrapping paper is also very popular, or you can create wallpaper for your walls. I hope I've given you some ideas on what you can do with them besides the obvious three-dimensional texturing and game designs. I tried to make it work with Flux, but either it gave an error or didn't repeat. I went on GitHub and the creator of the node replied in a comment that it doesn't work with uh, SD3 or Flux because they have different architectures. So let's hope someone creates a node for, for Flux as well. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like or a comment. If you want to support the channel, you can also join my membership or leave a super thanks, just like the Legend subscribers whom I want to thank for all their support. See you on Discord. Have a great day.